Hello everybody, and welcome to Bedtime Stories with Arcane. It's been a long time since we've recorded any videos of this, and this is something I want to bring back to my channel, so that you too may enjoy the sounds of a good quality book. So, let's go ahead and get started. The first book we're going to be doing this season is The Sad Story of Emmeline Burns. So let's go ahead and get started on this. My name is Toma Andrews, and I am a victim of identity theft. It's all Aunt Catherine's fault, of course. Most things are, according to Mom, stealing Mom's favorite dress. When they were both schoolgirls was bad enough. But stealing the name of her first and only daughter? Now that's a low not many of us can sink to within our lifetimes. My name was supposed to be Amelia. Mom has always loved the name Amelia, though I don't know why. She wanted to call me Amelia if I was a girl, and Thomas if I was a boy, after her father. And then Aunt Catherine ruined everything. Aunt Catherine felt pregnant, fell pregnant with her first child around the same time my mom found out she was going to have me. Their due dates were also very similar, only a few weeks apart. The mom and Aunt Catherine have never been particularly close. They spent more time together during their twin pregnancies than they had ever done over the last decade. They attended the same hospital for their checkups and went to the same support group at the Civic Center, and their rocky relationship improved over complaints about bladder infections. <laughs> Morning sickness and uncontrollable cravings for anchovies, mom, or smoked cheese, which was Aunt Catherine. And then Aunt Catherine stole my name. Aunt Catherine is one year younger than my mom, but she had always got things first. That's what mom told me. She was the first to have her period, to pierce her ears, and to have a serious boyfriend. She was the first to have a baby, too. A baby girl. A girl called Amelia. Mom didn't know what to do, having her dreams stolen away from her so suddenly. She had half a mind to confront Aunt Catherine about it, but didn't in the end. She only begun to repair her steadily re her relationship with her sister, and she didn't want to ruin it. But she still was annoyed. She still is. Mom could have called me Amelia anyways, but the name didn't feel special to her anymore. Not when Aunt Catherine had used it. In the end, after much deliberation, Mum decided to go with her sec second option, Thomas. Who names their child Thomas? A girl, of all things. <laughs> Since I was a girl, however, Thomas was out of the question. Was there a female variant of Thomas then? Thomasina, Thomasanjaya, Thomaseta? Maybe not. There was Toma, however. Toma Andrews, <clears throat> and that's how I got my name. That might explain why I don't like it very much. My, mu my name isn't really mine. Like clues that are two sizes too big, it doesn't fit me properly. It never has. That's because it was never intended for me. If I'd been called Amelia, would my life be any different? Would it change who I am? I don't know, because I've never been in a million. I'm just Tony, the weird girl with the weird name. And my name isn't the only thing weird about me. Ever since I can remember, my mom has been obsessed with family history. She says it's like playing detective, peeking back into the past with only fragments of information trying to find the truth. Mom took me to the library with her, 
when I was small, so she could keep a watchful eye over my little blonde head while she delved into the annals of our family's long lost history. There she would spend hours and hours searching through the online databases and old archives on the hunt for articles about the Spencers or the Kendalls or the Lintons or the Becketts or the Bradfords. Unfortunately, our family used to be pretty rich back in the day. Mom says it's a lot easier to research your family tree if you come from a wealthy background. There are more records kept on the comings and goings of the rich as opposed to street beggars and paupers. That's probably because of the money. One second, guys. Let me shut my air conditioner off. Better. As soon as money is involved, people will pay attention to you. It was like that back in the 1700s, and it's exactly the same now. I remember that the floor of the library was hard, covered in dark green carpet that was uncomfortable and scratchy, and the walls were a dull grey, like the concrete blocks in a multi-story car park. Though Mum got me a library card, I always got bored with the first half hour or so. There are only so many times you can reread volumes of Goosebumps. Despite these inconveniences, however, I still found the stories Mum would tell me about my long dead relatives interesting. The stories sounded like they came from the pages of a book, not real life, not history, my history. There were stories about my great grandfather, Zachary Kendall, who used to be a priest, but was fired from his post after he physically assaulted a member of his congregation while drunk on Christmas Day. There were, there were stories about my great-great-great-grandmother, Maribel Spencer, who ran away from home at the age of 15 to marry her middle-aged piano teacher, Roger Beckett. There were stories about my great-great-great-great-great Aunt Rose Bradford, who was rumored to be a witch <coughs> and claimed she could cure any ache or illness with the sprig of a holly. I don't know why, but these stories my mom told me of unknown people from unfamiliar times always resonated with me. Maybe it was because they were fictional characters or celebrities. But real people, my family, part of me. I wouldn't be alive right now without Zachary Kendall if he did beat up a member of his congregation, and I wouldn't be alive without Maribel Spencer, even if she did have a thing for older men who could play a semi decent Fuhr Elise. In a way, I owe them. I owe them a lot. I suppose what they say is true. Blood really is thicker than water. And speaking of blood, the local library wasn't the only place my mum's investigations led her. Oh no, that was just the tip of the iceberg. She used to take me to cemeteries a lot. Not just this cemetery, barrowed by all saints, all cemeteries across Lincolnshire, and sometimes even further afield, to Yorkshire, or even Ly Leicestershire, or like, I, I don't know, I don't know that word. Next. <laughs> the thing about the family history is, if you get obsessed with it like mom, birth certificates and death certificates stop being enough. You want to see real evidence of your ancestors' past lives for yourself. Hence the graveyards. Lots and lots of graveyards. Every weekend without fail, my mum would take me on a trip to a graveyard, searching for ancestors. Sometimes we'd turn it into a game. We'd challenge one another to see who could find Rose Bradford's final resting place before the quickest. The winner got to choose what we listened to 
in the car on the way home. Being my mom's daughter, I hated her taste in music, and I was desperate to beat her. <laughs> I got quite good at finding graves, if I do say so myself. Even though I was around seven or eight, and my legs weren't as long as my mom's, I was able to beat her nine times out of ten. I used to think she was going easy on me. Now, I'm not so sure. I just have a talent. I'm good at finding dead people, even if they have been dead for two centuries, and all that's left behind are bones. Now let me get one thing straight. I'm not crazy. I don't think dead people call out to me or anything. I've never seen a ghost before, excluding the ones in horror movies. I guess it's just a coincidence. But it's quite a strange coincidence. Whenever I went into a graveyard with my mom, I just knew where to look, almost instinctively. My feet just happened to lead me to a tombstone, and via some strange skill, I might have inherited from Rose Bradford, the self-proclaimed psychic. I was usually right. That might be why I'm obsessed with cemeteries, even now. I just like, I just like some people, no, just like some people prefer hot weather, others cold. I like graveyards. They remind me of my childhood, of time spent with my mom, searching for my relatives. When I went out to graveyards, when I went out looking for graves with my mom, I was always right. Ever since I started attending St. Hugh's College, I've only ever felt wrong. Though I get good grades in most of my classes, I'm helplessly lost when it comes to anything beyond that. I have hardly any friends other than Hattie, and even she might turn against me if she knew how I felt about her. I'm nothing like Amelia Miller, who just so happens to be in the same form as me. She's always surrounded by people. They'll all love her. Would they love me if I'd been called Amelia instead? I don't know. But I do know, even though it's unfair and ridiculous, I don't, I don't dislike Amelia. I'm still jealous of her. Her parents are still together, and her dad has a good job, and she has nice skin and pretty blue eyes, and she's incredibly popular. I, on the other hand, am awkward and shy. I can't hold a conversation with anybody other than Hattie. That might be another reason why I like graveyards. There are lots of people in them, but they can't bother me like they do in school. They're dead, and that's perfectly fine by me. As the saying goes, dead men tell no tales, they leave only tales behind, which we can examine as we see fit. That's why I came to Barrow by All Saints this Friday. Instead of catching the bus to go to school, I just wanted some time off, a few moments where I could stop being myself, a person I've never liked. If only I had been born as an Amelia, then my life would be so much better. I would be so much better. The day is overcast for early autumn, and a thick layer of fog creeps along the ground. The grass is wet with morning dew. But the soil beneath it, beneath it, is firm and hard. I suppose that's to be expected. I wouldn't want to build a graveyard on a marshland where people would run the risk of falling through the earth and into the graves. I might have an affinity for the dead, but not even, I fancy, popping in for an unexpected visit 
with Gerald Fisher, 1843-1912, and Elaine, wife of the above. It's so cold now, the wind snakes down my spine, and I share It's a rough wind, though instead, it's soft, brushing past my cheeks, through my hair in an almost apologetic manner. The leaves on the trees are dark green, some turning red and yellow, with the sun in the sky is obscured by clouds, so everything looks gray. My feet crunch over the stray leaves with every step I take, but that's only the sound I can hear. Just me, the wind, and the leaves. As I walk through these, I try them paths. I pause, examining each tombstone that catches my interest. There's something strange and inviting about these old slabs of stone, almost as though they're greeting me. And why wouldn't they? I come here often enough. They should know me by now. And the other mother will probably find their daughter's obsession with graveyards upsetting or unsettling. Unfortunately, well, fortunately, my mom is just as weird as I am. So she doesn't question it. She must know my love for graveyards is all her fault. I nod my head in recognition. I pass each tombstone. Alistair Doncaster, Irene Douglas, Charlotte Draper, Doreen Hughes, Abel Johnson, Genevieve Parson, Aubrey Wedgwood. I wonder about these people. Reduced to nothing more than their names and bones. What lives did they lead? Were they happy, sad, or merely amused by all the coincidences which led them into being? For Alistair Doncaster, that happened in 1879. For Irene Douglas, it was 1894. What was the world like back then, when these people were alive, and their footsteps, not mine, crunched their leaves and fell firmly against the compacted earth? I don't know. It's hard for me to imagine it. As I walk through the graveyard, like Alice sinking into Wonderland, a heavy thought suddenly strikes me. What would it be like? if I was already dead. I close my eyes. The cold wind blows across my cheeks, and I can almost smell it. The earth in my nostrils the scent of TK. Well, this isn't much of a bad story, guys, but uh, I'm going to save this here. Um... And we're going to go ahead and end the episode out here for today, guys. Um, main menu. Yes. Alright, so guys, I'm going to end the episode out here for today. Um, let me know your thoughts, comments, whatever you guys think. You know, I want to keep doing this. I think it would be well enough. Pretty damn cool. You know, we just keep doing this, you know. I want to complete this entire st storyline with you guys, and if I am correct, we should be able to come over here, we see we got new game, we got load game, so we should be able to come over here and pick up where we left off at. So, till next time everybody, take care, I'm out of here, later.